Hey everyone, this is James covering R-Type. Uh, I have to say I am pretty excited about this game. I played it a little bit already, um, and let's just jump right in. Um, I'm just going to play Unlimited because I noticed I've made a, This is my second video trying to make this. Um, I am terrible at playing this game while talking. I'm terrible at playing every game while talking, but... Oh, like right there. I just crashed. Anyways, as you can see, this is a side-scrolling game. Um, there's been tons of these throughout um, video game history. But I, for one, um, have a very specific memory of a game that I had on... I, tried, I was trying to look for it earlier on the internet and couldn't quite figure it out. Um, but it was a game that came with a demo disc for my PlayStation, one of the first game systems I really played a lot out of. And I didn't have my own games for quite, quite a while with the PlayStation, but I did have the demo disc, and I remember my sister and I played that demo disc a lot. Um, and it was a game just like this. Uh, and I actually think this game has a lot going for it in that it is very um, nostalgic in a way. I don't know if you noticed the way the explosions look. Those remind me of um, lots of other games like this that are side-scrollers. A lot of these games are called Bullet Hell. Um, games and bullet hell games are named so because of the complex patterns and lots of bullets that get shot out at you as you're playing the game. Mine doesn't look like that because I'm really bad at it and keep dying up within the first level. Um, but yeah, these these kind of games are, for whatever reason, even though I'm not good at them, are a kind of game that I enjoy a lot. I find them, the pace of them, to be very quick. Uh, I like the patterns that you're required to make. I feel like they're the kind of things that I can understand, even if I cannot physically recreate them using my thumb or my joystick or whatever else it is that I happen to be using. Um, yeah, so I, I really enjoy games like this, and this one then seems to have some special stuff going for it. So I'll, I'll point out what I've noticed so far that I found interesting. Uh, like I said, the graphics in this game, I feel like, have gone for a very specific feel, which is some kind of late 90s, early 2000s graphics. Um, I've noticed it especially in the explosions, the uh, kind of bubbly style of um, the architecture and stuff like that below. I mean, this is maybe just... Um, the game designer's uh, style, but I, I felt like it was very purposeful, um, and not, uh, purposeful, what is that word? Whatever that word is for making a reference to something from the past. And I think it's really cool, and I think it does the game well. Um, oh, and I also think that the art in this game looks a lot like H.R. Geiger. I, if you're not familiar with him, he's the, uh, kind of the concept artist behind, um, the Aliens... The alien from um, the alien movie and also a lot of the set design in those movies. Um, he is a really cool artist and a lot of this stuff kind of reminds me of it, especially like the spaceship and stuff that you seem to be flying through. I'm um, not sure what the connection there is or if it's just a similarity. So yeah, as you can see, it's set on unlimited, so I just keep restarting in places when I die a million times. One of the last things I really want to talk about, um, I feel like this game probably speaks for itself more than anything. If this is something that interests you, you're going to go look for it and download it, and if, you know, if you're not interested, it's not a big deal. But regardless of if you're interested in playing this game, I think you might be interested in a video by PBS Idea Channel. It's absolutely one of my favorite channels ever, and the point... Oh, man. The thumb placement in this game is really annoying. The point of the video, or the question of the video, um, every week they ask a question, is can bullet hell games, aka this style of game, but they're kind of talking about more specifically much more complicated uh, styles, or at least levels, um, can they can be considered meditative, as in when you are doing really well or you've played them enough to stop thinking about how to play them, um, is that a form of meditation? I am not someone who meditates, but I has always been my understanding that meditating is something that um, is not necessarily indicative of non-action. It can be actions, can be meditative too. So uh, just something interesting you should definitely check out. You should check out all their videos. Um, I absolutely love them. 
they deal with lots of um, pop culture and technology kind of questions I feel like that I find interesting and I think you guys might find interesting too. So yeah, uh, I'll probably review more of this game and maybe try and get into some cool history or mentions of other uh, um, bullet hell games uh, in my blog. So feel free to check that out. Um, and other than that, I think I'm going to end the video here and just keep playing. Oh, one more thing I did want to say, and I think I kind of mentioned this a second ago, but I feel like these kind of games really suffer from the placement of your thumbs when you're playing the game. Like, if I am moving, if I'm touching the screen too far ahead, or if I, and even if I'm touching back here, it's hard to explain, but a lot of the things behind my ship, I can't see them coming because they're blocked by where my thumb and hand are. Just something that I'm curious to see how game, you know, developers will work with that over time. I feel like I've, it's been something that's been a problem with touchscreen games for a long time, and definitely deserves uh, some creative minds coming up with creative solutions. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Have a good day. And then I died again.